Alright, looks like the stream is running. I'm going to just quickly check that. Seeing ourselves again and again and again. See, that's funny. <laughs> Alright, but it all seems to be working. Um, if you are joining us today, it doesn't seem to be like there's anybody in the chat right now, so I'm just talking to myself by the looks of it. Um, but as you enter, do pop in and say hi. Um, <clears throat> Gonna make sure that nobody is struggling to connect. Seems to all be good. Hey, AJ's here. Welcome. Um, got some folks coming in. That's very cool. All right. Uh, as usual, let me know if the audio is good or bad. Shall I say? Uh, let me know if the music is too loud. Uh, I'm actually going to drop the music down just a tad. There we go. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know if there's any audio glitches or anything like that. So, <clears throat> as you're joining today, I want to give a little bit of background as to why we're even here this week. Um, I have been, for the last six months or so, I have been working on the WordPress beginner the beginner WordPress developer learning pathway for learn WordPress and I'm pleased to say that I am two videos short there's two more coming on here uh, two videos short of completing this this pathway um, and there was a series of lessons that I did <clears throat> about a month ago now a little over a month ago around setting up a multi-site network um, and one of the comments on the setting up a multi-site network video which I thought was quite interesting well, somebody posted uh, Amir uh, Shayat Shayeste Tabar. I apologize if I'm messing up your name there, my friend. Uh, asked, can you make a video on how to set up a VPS with WordPress multi-site subdomain on open line speed with Ubuntu 2004? Um, so that got me thinking. Uh, yes, I could do that because I have been fortunate to have fiddled with some server things over time. Um, I'm going to find the issue. Um, and uh, I have played around with virtual private servers. I have set up my own servers. Um, I'm a bit of an Ubuntu nerd. <laughs> and so I posted this as an idea. Um, and I got some feedback from folks to say that um, folks might find it interesting. It's probably more of a niche topic. What about if you were to um, sort of don't target one specific server setup or operating system, uh, make it more platform agnostic. Um, so then I thought, well, what about covering installing WordPress and converting to multi-sites on all the common web server platforms? So Apache, Nginx, and Open Lightspeed. And the reason that I thought, sorry, one sec, I just need to turn something off. Anyway, what I was saying was um, one reason that I want to do both all three, Apache, Nginx, and Open Lightspeed, is I'm fairly comfortable with Apache web server. Um, I'm also fairly comfortable with Nginx. I'm more comfortable with, hey, uh, I am Axel Chip. Hello. <laughs> I like I like the way you into the chat, my friend. Um, so I'm very I'm very comfortable with Apache. I've been using Apache as as, as my default uh, web server since around 2006. I want to say, uh, maybe even before that, 2004. Um, I'm fairly comfortable with Nginx. I have set up and installed Nginx environments. Um, I Apache is still my preferred option because it's just I feel easier to configure and it supports HD access out of the box. I know Nginx is faster in terms of serving static content. 
Um, but Apache is what I'm probably definitely more comfortable with. But I've never experienced open light speed. I've heard about it. I know that it exists as a concept, but I've never used it. So I thought that this was a great idea to actually turn this into three different uh, live streams. So how to install WordPress on an Ubuntu VPS specifically. Um, why Ubuntu? Because in my opinion, it's the easiest server to get into. It's based on Debian, which is one of the more stable uh, Linux servers. Um, and also it's the one that I have the most experience with. I have used Ubuntu now since about 2006. That's when I started using Apache on Ubuntu, uh, maybe even before that, uh, pretty much when I started web development. I was on Windows at the time and I just found Windows to be annoying to use. And the, the, the thing that I struggled with was the pathing, the fact that Windows, uh, PHP on Windows isn't specific about whether your paths are uppercase or lowercase or whatever. Um, if your path if your path has uppercase letters in it and you type it all lowercase, it'll still work. Whereas if you do that on Linux, it's going to break. Um, and so I wanted to be developing in the environment that I was going to be deploying this code to. So I taught myself basic Ubuntu, Ubuntu server uh, admin and I had a little Ubuntu server at home. So I have probably the most experience with Ubuntu. Um, and so I thought that's what I'll do. I'll start with Apache. Then I'll do one on Nginx, which will be a lot of the same stuff, just the Nginx specific stuff. And then the open light speed stuff will be whatever open light speed is. And obviously I'll have to do some research there. So that's why we're here. <laughs> so this is the Apache uh, version of this of this workshop or this live stream, should I say. Um, I'm planning on doing the Nginx one sometime in July and then the open light speed one sometimes towards the end of July. So if I look at the dates, the July one will probably be run about the first or second week of July, uh, second or third week of July. And then maybe the engine next one will be maybe in the first week in August. So that's the plan there. Um, and the goal is to try and build a fully functional uh, WordPress server using Ubuntu, uh, set up with multi-site, using a domain, uh, and try and do it within an hour. That's the goal. I want to try and do it within an hour. And I've already spent eight minutes now sharing the backstory. So I'm cutting myself a little bit short. Um, okay, let's get into it. What I have done before this call is I registered a DigitalOcean uh, VPS. Uh, they call them droplets on DigitalOcean. Um, we're going to see if I can log in here without sharing my password. So let's go log in with a different account. And I think one password should have my, my password saved for this account. There it is. Um, so I'm not sharing anything. Uh, and I've, I've created this droplet. Uh, now I've got to get my email. So let me drag a tab off screen so I can open up my email. Um, and I'll get this verification code that we need here. Uh, where's this email address? There we go. And I should probably configure this with my with my password manager, but I couldn't be bothered now. <laughs> uh, so let's log in there. Um, the only reason I've used DigitalOcean for this is because I'm, again, I'm more comfortable with DigitalOcean. I've used DigitalOcean quite a bit before. So there is the VPS. I, call, I just called it Cycrotech VPS and I'll explain why in a second. And there is the IP address, which is the most important part. Um, you don't have to use DigitalOcean. There are things like Linode. Um, so Linode is another option. There is Vulture, which I think is now called something else. I think Vulture got acquired by, somebody got acquired. Uh, oh, it was, it was Linode. Okay, Linode got acquired by Akami. There's Vulture, there's Google Cloud, there's Microsoft Azure, uh, there's AWS, there's all these services that allow you to create VPSs. But DigitalOcean was one of the first ones that I ever used, and it's, again, the one that I'm the most comfortable with. So I've created a very basic uh, virtual server. DigitalOcean calls them droplets. Um, it has half a gig of memory, 10 gig hard drive space, and I'm running Ubuntu 22.04. Now, the person who requested this video originally wanted 2004, but 2204 is the most stable LTS at the moment. Uh, LTS is long-term support. There is 2404, which has come out recently, but that's still, I always wait until the first point version of an LTS comes out before I start using it. So I'm gonna to stick to 2204. So that's what I did in the background. I set up the, I set up the server, set up the IP address, and then the other thing that I did was uh, I configured, I have a custom domain, my custom domain. I have a domain that I've owned for many, many years. It's the psychotech.coza domain. Um, and I use it for all these kinds of tests and things. So I've set up the psychotech domain. So if we ping uh, psychotech.co.za, you'll see it's pointing to the IP address 164.90.237.97, which is 
the IP address of the server. Where is it now? There we go. 164.92.37.97. So that I did that I did before this call. Um, so you will need to have a domain set up. You will need to have your domain, your DNS managed somewhere, and your DNS pointing to your IP address for your server. Um, I just I had to do all that up front because I was logging in and creating accounts, and I didn't want to be doing that on the live stream. Um, but that's where we're at. If you need, if once you decide what server you're going to use, what platform you're going to use, they often will have instructions on how to set all these things up. Uh, you can Google this information. It's it's all there. Okay, so I got my server set up. What I also have done um, with DigitalOcean servers, you can choose to set it up with a root username and password, or you can set it up with an SSH key. I haven't gone the SSH key route. I've kept it very simple, root username and password, uh, which I'll be using to log in with today. And I won't be sharing my password with you. <laughs> um, but I might I might set up the SSH key during the, during the installation. We'll see how it goes. Then let's quickly talk about resources. So one of the other reasons that I like to use DigitalOcean is they have some amazing community documentation around setting up and managing your servers. Um, <clears throat> this article, this how to install LAMP stack on Ubuntu is an article that I have bookmarked. I have used it many, 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 many times. Uh, I'm gonna share the link with you in the chat. Um, and what's nice is they update it every year when the new versions come out. Um, and it's very, very, you know, they walk you through it. Currently, it's it's configured to set up for 2204. Um, it has been the same way since 1804. Uh, so you can go through this and you can usually set up everything you need um, following these instructions. So it's another reason why I like to support DigitalOcean. I get no money from supporting them, um, but I've always liked their, their walkthroughs, their tutorials. Um, they're very, very good and very, very detailed. So that's what I'm going to be using today primarily to set up the server. Um, and then once we have the basic LAMP stack set up, then we'll dive into setting up WordPress um, and all of those kinds of things. Okay, so let's dive in. Today's gonna to be very different because I'm not gonna be doing much in my code editor. I'm gonna be mostly working in the terminal. Uh, so the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna make my terminal window font a little bit better, a little bit bigger so that we can all see what's going on. Um, and I don't actually know where to do that, to be honest. I wonder if you can just control command. No, you can't there, command plus maybe. Ah, oh, there we go, command plus does it. Okay, command plus works. So that should be that. Um, there we go, that's a bit bigger. It should be, should be clear on screen what we're doing. So that's gonna be where I'm doing most of my work today. Uh, and I'm going to just open up my little note of screen and copy the root password. Um, and I'm going to log into the server. The other piece of documentation that I want to share with you, I wonder if they do it in this one. I just want to see Apache, MySQL, PHP. They don't talk about setting up the SSH key. Um, so DigitalOcean does have an initial server setup guide, um, which is basically just the process of setting it all up and all the things you might need to install. So let's go to that one and see what they have here in terms of logging in as root, creating a new user grant. Okay, here we go. Here's all the things we need. Okay. So when you create your new server, you should import, you should perform some important configuration steps. So logging in as the root user, um, creating a new user, always a good idea. Um, granting the re relevant privileges, setting up a firewall, also a very good idea. Uh, so we're going to go through all of those steps first, uh, and then we'll dive into the LAMP stuff. So let me copy this out for you and share it in the chat. Um, and those are basically the two articles we'll be following today. So I am on 2204, so that's great. So now we log in as root. So in the terminal, you're gonna go SSH root at and the, and the IP address. Uh, or in our case, we could use the Psychotech domain. I'm gonna just use the IP address because it's easier. Um, and then it's going to ask me for my password, which I have copied off screen. So I'm gonna grab that. Um, don't want any of you logging into my server. <laughs> I'm going to kill the server after the session anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so there we are. We're logged in. Welcome to Ubuntu. Uh, we're all good there. Okay, excellent. Then the next step. Um, so they talk about the root user. And basically what you want to do is create a new user and then turn that user into what they call the pseudo user or having, having root privileges. Um, so it's going to be add user and the username. I'm going to call my, my user Jonathan. And then I'm going to run this user mod command. 
um, and, and go from there. So what I like about DigitalOcean is they allow you to copy these commands very easily. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split screen so that I don't have to keep jumping back and forth. There we go. Um, I'm just going to clear out that command. So it's add user, add user, and I'm going to call it jbossinger just for being weird. <laughs> okay, so it's created the jbossinger user. I'm going to type in a password um, that I know is pretty strong. It won't show up on screen, so that's fine. If you're wondering, I'm oh, passwords do not match. Let me try that again. <laughs> okay. Yay! Password has been changed. Okay, so full name. I'm just gonna put my name down. Room number is always an interesting one to me. Um, I guess it comes from like Linux being used in dormitories at universities back in the day. Um, maybe Debian, you know, I always find that room number question interesting. Okay, I don't care about work phone. I don't care about home phone. I don't care about other, uh, that's all correct. So there we go, I've created that user. Uh, and the next step is to grant that user the relevant administrator privileges. It's, it's something called pseudo access, basically, it's like your, the user has elevated permissions if they run it with a pseudo command. The nice thing about the pseudo system is it does warn you if you're about to do something dangerous. And you, I believe, I, I saw this somewhere recently on modern Linux systems, you actually can't like do anything dangerous without it asking you first. Like that whole joke about running uh, RM minus RF star or something. You actually can't do that as a pseudo user without it warning you, hey, what you're about to do is dangerous. So it's a really good idea to have a, a what we call a pseudo user setup, which is what we're doing now. So user mod, uh, a g uh, pseudo, and then it's the username. Okay, so that's been done. Um, so now we talk about firewalls. Um, setting up a firewall is a great idea. It basically stops traffic to everything but certain um, areas. Um, there's a newer firewall uh, application called uh, UWF. So if we run that command, OpenSSH is the only thing that's currently available. So the, the ability to SSH into the server, which is great. Um, so firewall allows SSH connection. So let's allow SSH. Um, okay, that's been done. And then now we enable the firewall. So currently the only thing that you'll be able to do is SSH into the server. When we get onto you know, MySQL and all that, we can worry about that, what we need to do there. We shouldn't have to do anything, but we just want open SSH enabled. So yes, um, that's fine. And it's active and enabled on system startup. Excellent, so let's check the status quickly. I love the fact that these things are copyable. Uh, it's, it's one of my favorite things about modern uh, technical documentation is the ability to just click copy on some code uh, and run it wherever you need to run it. Okay, so status, there we go. So open SSH is enabled, excellent. Uh, that's great. Then we want to enable external access for the user. So we need to make sure we can SSH in. Um, so they talk about configuring SSH access for your user depends on whether your server's root account uses a password or SSH keys. If you're logged in using your password, then password authentication is enabled for SSH. You can then SSH to your new account by opening up a terminal and using SSH with your new username. So this, according to the instruction, should be workable. So let's try that. So let's open a new terminal. Let's do it in a new tab. And I'm going to go sshjbossinger at, and I'm just gonna go psychotech because the domain is pointing to the IP address. Um, and it's remote host identification has changed. Now earlier I tried to connect to the psychotech.co as a domain. Um, so it's telling me that there's an error somewhere with all of this. So the nice thing is when this happens, I can just delete uh, line 15 in my in my um, in my known hosts. So I'm going to edit this uh, locally. Uh, it's going to ask me for my password. Du, 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 okay, and it's one 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's all the Psychotech ones. So I'm going to pop those out. Um, so I'm going to just delete those, check for any more. Uh, there's no more there. Okay, excellent. Basically, the reason that's happening is because I've connected to a server that's linked to Psychotech previously uh, when it was hosted somewhere else. And it's got a, a a line in the host file saying, this is where I think you're connecting to. So are you sure you want to carry on? You know, there's a problem. So I have to now clean up my local lone host. This probably won't happen to you if you do this. This is probably just a, you know, a me thing. <laughs> um, so let's go and try and log in again. Yeah, there we go. It looks like it's better. It's saying the authenticity can't be established. Um, are you sure about this? The host key is using other names. You see, it's telling us that it's using an IP address. That's fine. I'm happy. I want this to connect. <clears throat> and then it adds that and then it asks me for the password. And that's the password I just created for that user on the server. So now I need to remember that password. If you're wondering why my head is turning back and forth, because I have to look behind my mic so I can see my password uh, keystrokes. <laughs> All right, I'm in. I'm good. Um, so now what's cool about this is I don't need to be logged in as root anymore, uh, which is not a good idea. So typically what you would do now is you would actually disable um, root access. Um, and I'm not quite sure how that's done anymore. Uh, so I'm going to hop over onto another article that I often refer to. Uh, this is a, a server setup guide by a company called SpinUp WP. Uh, it's a company that I actually worked for for a while, while I was employed at Delicious Brains. They do specifically WordPress VPS hosting, uh, but they also have a great article about setting up um, your WordPress server. So this is another one that I always keep bookmarked. Um, and I want to just check if there is a... Um, if they talk about disabling the root user. Uh, so there's all the stuff we just did. There's the key pair. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, public key, SSH keys, all of that. Um, here we go. SSH configuration. With your news, you created time to further secure the server by configuring SSH. The first thing to do is disable SSH access for the root user, which will no longer let you log into the server via SSH using the root user. So that's something you want to do. Once you've got your user set up with your password, it's always a good idea to disable root access. So I'm going to, with my... With my JBossinger user, I'm going to go into the sshd config. It's going to ask me for my password again. There. Yeah. I have to move my mic. Okay. And then you need to find the line that says permit root login. Yes. So I'm going to go and find. Oh, it's asking me password's wrong. There we go. So we're looking for root, permit root login, yes. You'll notice I'm using, uh, let me actually quit out of here. You'll notice that I'm using Nano uh, as a text editor when I'm on the server. You can use VI and Vim and those things if you're more comfortable with those. I prefer Nano because it's just easier to work with. Um, and you can use Control uh, W um, to do a search. So I'm gonna go Control W and I'm gonna search for permit root login there we go and change it to permit root, root login no um, okay so there we go so the root user can't log in now um, i need to save that file and then i need to restart the ssh server now the ssh server is something that is uh, enabled by default on a new digital ocean vps um, yes, I will share the spin up WP link in a second. I actually did think about that now. So give me a second while I just finish here. So there's the SSH restart. So that's done. So now I'm going to exit out of here and I'm going to try and log in as the root user again. Um, so let's do that one and it should give me an error. Oh no, it's going to ask me for the password. Okay, that's fine. Once I pass in the password, it should give me an error. So let me paste that password yes permission denied okay so the root user can't log in so that's great so even if you guys did hack my root password you wouldn't be able to log in now um, so that's that done cool let me grab this link um, the other thing I would mention is that the spin up WP link they specifically use uh, nginx 
so when i do the nginx version of this of this uh, live stream next week or next month or whenever i'm going to be using that extensively um so that's a good one to follow as well all right so we've done the initial service setup we've got a user we've got a secure user um, we're logged in as that user what is a good idea to do now and i should have actually done this while i was still logged in as root is to actually log out as that user once you've made changes and then log in again um, so I'm taking a bit of a chance. So to make sure I don't have any problems, what I'm going to do is I'm rather just going to open up a new tab uh, and I'm going to try and log in as the jbossinger user. So SSH jbossinger at psychotech.co.za uh, and that should uh, allow me to log in. It's asking for the password. W uh, and uh, I realize I might just mention my password on the live stream, so I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, Okay, and I can still log in. Now notice I can be logged in with the same user twice in two different terminal sessions. Uh, that's normal, that's expected, but I can still log in, so that's great. So now I can exit out of that one. Um, root has been locked up, so that's great. And I can exit out of this one. So let's just uh, quit there and exit out of there. And let's close down this tab. And so now I've just got the one, the one open. Okay. So that is my recommendation. Do the initial service setup. Did I share that link as well? Yes, I shared that link and I shared SpinUpWP, so that's all good. Um, so definitely do the initial service setup. It makes your server more secure. Um, and then let's go and set up the software we need. So the software we need is back on this article. Here we go. So this is your basic LAMP setup. So Linux, Apache, uh, MySQL, and PHP. Now, what I like about um, DigitalOcean is because the articles are from the same space, they have an update for the firewall. So if you've set the firewall in the previous step, then they give you some, some steps to update it, which is very, very nice. Um, so the first step you should always do is you should always update your, your server whenever you start a new server. Um, so it's sudo apt update, and that'll check for any new versions of any software from the repositories and install any new software, any new security updates. It's always a good idea. Um, there are ways that you can configure your server to automatically run these updates on a schedule. I'm not going to dive into that now, uh, but it's always a good thing to do when you first start your server. Um, if you're running, if you're, so just to go back to that command, let me just clear this out. Um, yeah, not that one, that one. So sudo is what I do if I want to run any kind of uh, root privileges command and updating my, my server software is one of those. Apt is the um, the package uh, manager for the server. So on Ubuntu, it's Apt. On uh, Red Hat, it's Yum. Uh, it's basically the package manager for the server. And each Linux distribution has its own package manager. Uh, there are additional package managers you can add up. Um, and and so this is the one we'll use for Ubuntu. Uh, Sammy says, did you mean live, live path regards to automatic update? Um, I, I think that is it called live is it live path or live patch? Uh, it's live patch. Uh, yes, that's one option. Um, the live patch updating. Uh, there's also something called unattended upgrades. You can install that as well. There's multiple different ways of doing it. If you my back, can you hear me? Is it working? Um, if you're there and you can hear me, please give me a hey. <laughs> that was extremely annoying. I don't know what happened there, but my screens went blank and when they came back, I lost my sound. <laughs> so if you're out there in the chat and you're still there and you can still see this, say hi, please. <laughs> um, yay, AJ says the stream is back. That's great. Um, I, I do apologize for that, folks. I don't know what happened. Was one of you trying to hack me, perhaps? <laughs> um, that is so frustrating. <laughs> um, but anyway, we're back. So we'll just we'll just continue along. <laughs> oh, my word. I don't think that's ever happened to me in two years. Well, maybe not a year. Yeah, two years. Three years of live streaming. That has never happened to me, folks. So I apologize. Um, now things are happening weird here. Let me just copy this. Okay, where were we? What were we doing? Can anybody remember what we were talking about? <laughs> I've forgotten. All right, let's get on with it. Um, oh yes, I was talking about package managers. The mic, the mic, the mic is not working. Can can folks hear the mic? 
Uh, Tarek says the mic is not working. Okay. So seventh, seventh Ward made me can hear me. Uh, Tarek, if you can give me a thumbs up if you can hear me or let me know. Um, okay, Sammy says clear. So I'm going to assume it's all good. Maybe I just wasn't talking, um, which is very possible. Okay, cool. If you can't hear me, let me know. But uh, it seems like things are back to back to where they should be. All right. We were talking about live patch. We were talking about software. We were talking about apps and all those things. Okay, so let's get on with it. So sudo ssh. Uh, and this is one of the other reasons I like working with a domain already set up because I don't have to remember the IP address. I just remember the domain name. It makes life a lot easier. Ah, now it's asking me for passwords here. Um, one day it's just gonna let me take this off screen just in case. Okay, I didn't show it anyway. All right, yes, just do it. Uh, now it's gonna probably, oh no, that's fine. Okay, now we gotta do another password. Um, and I'll be honest, this is one of the reasons why it's actually a good idea to also set up your your um, SSH key pair um, because then you don't have to type in passwords every time. But anyway, I'm logged in now, I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, let's get on with it. So we ran the update um, and now we can install Apache. And the nice thing about setting up LAMP on an Apache server, so on a Ubuntu server, sorry, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, is it's very, very easy because, little known fact, the original developer, the original creator of PHP, uh, Rasmus Lodorf, spent a lot of time. Um, it's going to be wrong now, you watch. I can't do my password while I'm talking. Ah, I've done it wrong again. Uh, he spent a lot of time making sure that MySQL... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there you go. He spent a lot of time making sure that PHP, Linux, uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP worked well together and were easy to install. So that's why LAMP became the default stack. Um, and so if you're on Ubuntu and you want to install the LAMP stack, it's one of the easiest to do which is why I chose it as my first topic. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna do that. So it's basically, it's one command, it's sudo apt install Apache 2. Um, it asks you about whether you wanna install services. Yeah, that's fine. Um, when you get these kind of screens in the terminal, you can use tab to tab around and then enter for okay and shift to, to trigger things. It's like you're using a keyboard to browse around. Um, so I'm gonna restart that one. Uh, it does a whole bunch of things and installs a bunch of things. Um, and the cool thing about it, once it's done, I should be able to browse to the domain name and see the Apache landing page. I don't know why it's taking so long though. <laughs> it should just work. Um, let's see what happens if we browse to the IP address, which I'm not gonna remember. Um, did I write it down somewhere? No, I did not. Um, Oh, 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 it's not going to work because I need to allow Apache. <laughs> okay, so let's do that. So sudo uf app list. Um, so there we go. So now Apache is available to enable, which is great. So we want to enable those. Um, so we're going to allow Apache on port 80, um, which is there. Come on, run it. Thank you. Um, and I'm not going to worry about the status now. And now I should be able to browse. Let's see. I might have to restart the service. No, it should just. I wonder if it needs to be restarted. Let's see. Um... Okay. It's trying again. I have a feeling there's a command I need to... Let's just go to the status. It's all allowed. Let's try the IP address and see if that works. Um, uh, 
codes again. So many things that I just have set up by default that I forget that are needed when you do these things. Um, mm, Let's copy my IP address and see if that works. Okay, that works. Uh, I thought, okay, so now that I think about it, the reason the domain doesn't work is because I haven't set up a virtual host for that domain. So that does kind of make sense. So that's fine. So the IP address does work, I'm getting the default Apache 2 page. So cool, Apache is installed, excellent, all good. All right, um, now the step two is installing MySQL, step three is installing PHP, step four is creating a virtual host for the website. So that's the point where we'll set up the virtual host, which configures the domain name so that when the domain makes a request, the server knows what to do with it. So that's why Cycrotech wasn't working earlier. So we'll get there in a second. Um, so I do need the IP address. I was hoping I wouldn't. <laughs> Next step is installing MySQL. Um, so it's basically just this command over here. So we'll copy that one out uh, and we will paste it in there. And there we go. Da, 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 da. does a whole bunch of things. You can also um, skip this, do you want to continue by passing in a dash Y when you do the install command. We'll do that for PHP in a second. And I'll show you how that works. So that's going to do its thing. Um, and then, this is something that I'm very appreciative that DigitalOcean has included in this big red box. But basically in July of 2022, there was an update to the MySQL database that installed MySQL on your server by default using uh, what's known as the root authentication method. Um, basically what that means is only the root user on the server can log into the MySQL server to make any kind of changes. Um, and so what you need to do is you need to update the MySQL server to allow for what's known as password authentication. So you can log in as a, as a, as a root user or whatever you want. Um, and, then, and then you use those credentials to connect your WordPress site or whatever the case may be. So DigitalOcean is great. They've got this whole process here about all of these things. So what you then do once, once MySQL is installed, you log in as the root user by by putting sudo in front of the command. So anytime you see sudo in front of a command, in front of your user, it means you're trying to log in as the root user. Uh, so sudo mysql, there we go. Um, yeah, there was an error. <laughs> Didn't see that. Let's try that again. Ah, that's annoying. Server unable to determine if the dam is running. Server felt stopped. Huh. That's just typical. I've never seen this problem before in my life. Um, let's see what's sitting in the error log. This is going to take longer than an hour now. You watch. <laughs> this is annoying. Root localize into password. Ah, oh, good grief. I'm going to run. Ready to run update and run update again, and I'm going to run upgrade and see if that fixes something. Maybe there's some piece of software that's out of date or something. When in doubt, run update and upgrade.
Okay, so there were some changes, so let's see. Little part of the live stream where I got quiet because I'm annoyed. <laughs> part where you sit and watch and drink coffee <laughs> listen to music <sighs> I hope this fixes it because if it doesn't I don't know what I'm going to do I'm going to start googling should have run upgrade before I did anything else on the server. So that was a little lesson folks. If this does work, always make sure you run update and then upgrade before you do anything else. I need to go blow my nose. I'm going to turn the mic off because I blow my nose loudly. Doesn't get more live than that. <laughs> We've got 13 minutes left. I'm not going to get this done in an hour. Now I'm annoyed. <laughs> it's okay. I did set aside two hours for this, so it's not the end of the world. Okay. Unable to start the server. All right. Well, let's see if we can fix it now after this. It's still giving issues. Yeah, I'm going to keep the local version of that. Unless he didn't think installing the MySQL server would be where we got stuck. I wonder if it's a memory thing. I wonder if the web server needs to be upgraded to a one gig. Hmm. It's going to be really annoying if that is the case. Because I just chose the smaller server. Without thinking about that. And I don't know how quick it's going to be to upgrade the VPS. I wonder if it's worth upgrading the RAM. I've only ever done VPSs, I think, with one gig of RAM. So, I don't know if that could be the problem though. I would think 512 would be enough just to set up a basic LAMP install. Let's just see what free memory we have after this thing finishes. Actually, I can check that while I'm here. Um, bandwidth, CPU, disk IO, oh, they don't show memory usage. Uh, that's annoying.
<clears throat> on. <laughs> Hurry up. Uh. This is why Linux admins charge you lots of money, folks, because they have to sit around and wait for this kind of stuff to finish. I do this again, I'm going to run this before I run the live stream. Definitely, Sammy, I've definitely installed um, this configuration on a one gig of RAM before. So that's why I'm thinking it could be that. Um, so if this if this upgrade, if the software upgrade doesn't fix it, then I'm going to try resizing the machine uh, and seeing if that fixes it. Um, this is just taking really long, though, which is mildly annoying. And I'm wondering if that also has to do with the RAM, the available RAM. I do feel like that's what I need to do. Yeah, that's that's what I should have probably done before I started this <laughs> seventh ward. <laughs> Lessons learned. Do that before you run the live stream. <laughs> I, I stupidly assumed that by creating the server today, I would get whatever the latest stuff was. But I guess that was naive of me. <laughs> uh, this is taking so long now. What point do you give up? <laughs> At what point? Oh, here we go. Okay, couldn't do that. I'm almost sure this is a RAM-related issue. Um, what worries me now is if I cancel this process, what's going to happen? <laughs> um. <laughs> well, Sammy, if you've learned nothing else today, it's get bigger servers. <laughs> Don't run, don't run live streams on the smallest server possible. <laughs> that was my mistake. Um, blast. <laughs> I destroy and start over daily. Nice. Uh, I really think I've shot myself in the foot by not giving it at least one gig of memory. It worries me what's going to happen now if I, if I cancel this before it's done. I'm going to do it though. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. It's doing some things still. 96%. Come on, you can do it. Ninety-seven. We're almost there. We're almost there. Ninety-eight.
I want it to be done by now. I want it to have a working WordPress by now. <laughs> this is so annoying. Uh, hopefully we can get it done by half past. One. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I'm hoping that the upgrade to more RAM and CPU, or whatever it is, is quick. Um, I do know you have to turn your drop off to resize it. I'm pretty sure the RAM and CPU thing is quick. So I'm hoping that it's quick. So I'm going to, when this is done, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to hope for the best. There, it's ninety nine percent. Come on, hurry up. Mm. While that's doing that, I'm going to log in to a new tab quickly. I'm just going to run the free minus M command because I want to see how much free memory. So total is 466, uses 423. So it's very possible the memory is the issue because like it's, it's like six bytes free or whatever it is, uh, or 19. So it's very possible that's the that's the issue. Um, is it possible to horizontal scale your server while trying? I honestly have no idea. Um, with the DigitalOcean droplets, you have to turn off your droplet if you're going to increase the CPU and RAM. Um, I assume by for memory serves horizontal scale would mean adding more servers into a what do they call it, and then having a load balancer that bounce between the two. I think that's horizontal scaling. So you have more more instances of the server. Vertical is is bigger server, I think. I'm going to have to Google that now. Horizontal versus vertical scaling. Um, if my memory serve. Horizontal scaling excels in distributing workloads across multiple nodes. Vertical scaling suits scenarios where a single machine can handle the entire workload efficiently. Yeah. So horizontal scaling would be adding another server and then having a load balancer bounce the traffic between the two. That you can obviously do while your servers are running. Um, that's not going to fix this problem. <laughs> If it is the memory, this problem is a vertical scaling issue and I need to turn off the server to do that. Um, I am not a qualified Linux sysadmin, so I can't advise you on the differences and the benefits of horizontal versus vertical scaling. Uh, I have worked in companies where somebody else has managed that. Um, and basically vertical scaling, Amazon does it pretty well, DigitalOcean does it pretty well. It has a load balancer, which is like a server between the browser and your and your server. And then it detects if there's like high traffic peaks then it'll spin up a new copy of the current server and then push the traffic to the newer server. And then you have your database in a central location behind that and the multiple servers can connect to the database and back. But that's a whole different configuration uh, from what we got here. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, that wouldn't help me here. Um, okay, so that's finished. I'm pretty sure it's the RAM. So let's see if we can, if we can upgrade it. So I'm gonna upgrade it to the one gig. Um, and let's see how long that'll take. I first need to turn off the droplet. So let's turn it off. Okay, you'll still be bold. Yes, all right, fine. So let's turn it off. While that's turning off, I'm gonna exit out of here and also close this one down. Um, this should happen pretty quickly. Well, maybe not because it doesn't have enough memory to shut down. Cheapers. Uh, 
Oof. Come on. Everything's so slow today. Okay, it's off. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Let's upgrade it to one gig. Let's see. Right, uh, it seems to be pretty quick, so it's good. Ooh, not so much. This is like, this is like Windows version of time estimation. I <laughs> know oh, that's up again. Uh, it's down again. <laughs> it's up again. Uh, it's going up. It's going up more. Okay, that seems to be positive. It's going pretty fast. Okay, cool. It's been resized. That was that was nice and quick. So let's turn it on. It's on. Let's log in. Um, yeah, we can't log in. Does it have a new IP address? Please tell me it doesn't have a new IP address. Different IP address than the one ninety three seventy seven. Okay. So now our memory usage is fifty seven percent, so that's much better. Uh, let's see if we can install MySQL Server. It's the wrong password. Okay, so there we have it, folks. You can't do this on a 512 gig memory server. Lesson learned, uh, don't do that. <laughs> okay, um, the other thing I wanna do here now is I wanna check the IP address because I think it's changed. 164, 90, 237, 97. 164, no, it hasn't changed, 237, 97. So I wonder why the domain wasn't working. That's weird. Anyway, I'm not gonna worry too much about it now. Um, it's working, that's all I care about at this point in time. <laughs> Okay, let's get back to what we were doing. So we were logging in as the MySQL, as the sudo, as the root user, damn it. Um, sudo MySQL. Okay, there we are. So now we're logging to the database. And then it tells you to alter the root user to be identified by a password. Um, so I'm going to just keep that very simple. Um, and I'm just going to use that command. So root user identified by password. This is not recommended on a production environment. I don't recommend using the password password. Um, but I haven't opened up uh, port 3306, which is the default MySQL password or any MySQL services in the firewall. So I'm pretty sure this would be safe to do. We can test it in a second to make sure, but for now I'm leaving it as password. Um, but I don't recommend you do this on your own servers, make it something secure uh, or create a different user if you want to connect your WordPress sites, because just now I'm going to use it in the WordPress install, but I don't recommend doing this, okay? So if I see you doing this on your live servers, then I, I didn't tell you to do this. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as password. Um, okay, and then we can exit out of here. And now we should be able to run this MySQL secure installation, which is this. Um, and it asks a bunch of questions. So it says, answer yes, answer why for yes or anything else to continue without enabling. Okay, so it asks you for the, enter the password for the root user. So we can say password, done, okay. Uh, validate password component, uh, can be used to test passwords, checks the strength of the password, allows users to do, 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 do. Would you like to install that? Yes. I think it's actually gonna ask us to set a valid, a better password in a second. Um, so we'll do that. 
Okay, uh, then it talks about three levels of password. Um, so I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go with low on this one, but you know, you choose your own options there. Um, I'm gonna go with low. Change the password for root. Then it asks you to change your password for root. This is not to be confused with the system password. Um, and this is up to you whether you wanna do this. I am going to uh, change the password for root. I'm going to change the password right now. Um, so I have got a pre-prepared password that I had off screen. I'm going to copy the first letter just to see if I can paste it. Um, just to help with some additional security. Yeah, okay, that does work. Excellent. Um, so I created a root password securely for myself that, I've copying, that I'm copying. Oh, hopefully I'm copying it off screen. Let me just check my obs. Yes, it is off screen. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to just paste that in there um, and that'll be my new root user password. Um, so even if somebody did try and hack my server now, they wouldn't be able to use the default password anyway. So that's great. Do you wish to continue with the password provided? Okay, so it says the estimated strength is 50. So it's gone from 50 to 100. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that for now. Do you want to continue with the password provided? Uh, yes. Um, and then it asks you if you want to remove anonymous users. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and then disallow root login remotely. Um, so that would allow somebody external to the server to log in, which we don't want. Um, you can always disable it later if you want to access it, but I'm going to turn it off. So yes, I want to disallow root login remotely. Um, so that adds additional level of security. Remove test database. I'm going to leave the test database. Not too worried about that. Reload table privileges. Yes, let's reload privileges. Um, and we're done. Okay, so now you... When you finish test, we're able to log in by typing that. Um... Okay, so it talks about if you log in that way, you don't need a password, but you should be, I should be able to log in as the MySQL root user now. So MySQL minus U root minus P and my password. And that should allow me to log in. You can see the password there now. <laughs> um, I should have done it like this. Okay, I'll change that. Let me change that quickly. Um, <laughs> that was daft. <laughs> I just shared the password. Um, what was it? Pseudo MySQL and security installation. Let's go through that process again. Um, mm, 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 mm. Yeah. So let's paste that password that I just pasted. Um, okay. Now it's not allowing me to log in as that, that user and password. Um, that's what I should have done. And then pasted the password. And I can't log in. Um, now I want to be able to log in as that password. Um, I can't do that either. So password minus u root minus p. Uh. According to me, this should work. And it's not working, so I've done something wrong here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinstall everything. So sudo apt remove MySQL server. I think it's purge. While that's doing that, I'm going to open one password and generate another password. Offline.
Might be annoyed that it didn't work the way I wanted it to. Anyway. Let's go back. Okay, let's do this. Let's try this again. sudo apt install MySQL server. myself now. Ah, there we go. Okay. So that worked. So now let's try MySQL C root P. Let's see if that works. That works. And I'm not sure why it works. <laughs> That's annoying. Um, but this is essentially what I wanted to get to. I wanted to get to a point where, I wonder if it's because I reinstalled it. I kind of re, re... I wonder if I needed to re... set the server. Hmm. Because what I want is I want to be able to log in with the root user passing in my password. Because when I set up the website, I want that to work. So, it works. I'm a little annoyed that it does work, but it works. Um, I feel like maybe these instructions are a bit wonky. Like maybe I should have restarted this MySQL service before trying it. Um, so that would have been something like sudo uh, sudo service MySQL server restart or something. Um, is it that one? So do I... It's MySQL D. Can't remember now. Uh. Sudo service MySQL D restart. That's what it's supposed to be. Done something wrong because that should work. I'll just stop service, so it's not loaded. I'm confused now. Okay, well the weird thing is I can connect to the server using the password. Which is weird. I'm going to just update that password so that nobody tries to hack my server. So just give me a second. Yeah, I'm going to do that off screen. Um, I honestly don't know why this is working. And this is annoying me now. And normally, normally what I would do now is I would take a page out of Whose book was it? And I would nuke this thing and I would restart. Um, because I don't understand why that didn't work. Um, 
So I'm a little bit frustrated. Now I'm trying to change the password and it says the password doesn't... Uh, doesn't satisfy the current policy requirements. Good grief. Let's do this and one and oh no, do that. Let's see if that works. Okay, that worked. So I have a new root password now. Just clearing the screen so you folks can't see it. Um, I'm annoyed. I don't know why that didn't why that didn't work and why it does work now. Um, so I'm going to try this again when we do the Nginx version. See if I can figure out what's going on there. Um, Sammy says when you install MySQL Server, does it come bundled with MySQL Workbench and MySQL CLI? So Workbench, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think that's a specifically a GUI application. I think you have to install that separately. Uh, it does come with a MySQL CLI, which is why I'm able to run these MySQL com commands. So it does come bundled with that. Um, but essentially the end goal that I want to get to is this, where I can log in as the root user and I can specify a password, which I'm going to not paste incorrectly now. Um, and then I'll use that user to to connect for the WordPress site. So that's working. I don't know why it's not working. It's annoying me, but I'm going to press on anyway. <laughs> um, and I'm going to have to check this out on another server sometime and see exactly what's going on here. So I will do some research on this. And when we do the Nginx version, we'll see what we'll see what's going on there. Um, OK, next up is PHP. So again, we can just install these packages here. Now, the one thing I would note is that in the DigitalOcean uh, set up. They only get you to install PHP, the Apache mod, and the MySQL mod. It's a good idea to install anything else you might need. So there is a, a local WordPress development environment that I, no, not that one, um, that I manage. And I have a slightly longer version of that command in there. I don't mind sharing this because there's nothing, it's all public. Um, but the command that I use is this one. So I'm gonna copy that out. Um, and then I will paste this link in the chat so you can see it all there. Uh, but essentially it's this line um, so what I'm installing here is, no, not that one. Sorry, <laughs> didn't want that. I wanted the PHP stuff. Um, so here we go. Okay, so what I'm installing is PHP, the Apache module, MySQL, Common packages, XML package, XML RPC curl, the GD library, image magic, the CLI, uh, the IMAP stuff, the MB string stuff, the SOAP stuff, the zip stuff, because it's all used by PHP applications. Um, it's one of the things that I don't like about the DigitalOcean instructions is they don't go through all of that. They just install the PHP, and then as you realize you need packages, then you have to install them separately. I like to I like to do that all up front. So that's what I'm going to do now. You'll also see there's the minus Y. So that's what I mentioned earlier. You can append minus Y and that just says say yes to everything to your apt install commands. Um, somebody shared earlier that they do, who was it? Um, who was it that said they do, up, up, there we go. Uh, seventh Ward made me updates and upgrade minus Y, same thing. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna run that. And then that's all, and it's gonna, and you see it doesn't ask me, do I wanna install these things? It just, off it goes and it does its thing. Um, now what's interesting is that this is going to install the latest version of PHP, which I think is gonna be 8.3 on, on Ubuntu 22.04. I'm not sure. So we'll check once, once it's finished. According to this uh, documentation, it's 8.1, so we'll see. There is a way that you can install different versions of PHP. I'm not going to dive into that today. Maybe we'll do that in a future session. Um, but I just want to see what... Um, oh, it's 8.1 that's installing. So that's perfect. And that's another good reason 
to stick to a slightly older LTS of Ubuntu because it's going to be using a version that is pretty well supported by WordPress. I think WordPress just recently announced full support for PHP 8.1 because they're still busy working on 8.2 and 8.3. Um, so running a, a slightly older LTS of Ubuntu on your servers is often a good idea. Um, so in this case, I'm doing 2204, which is the so the most recent one was 2404, which was released in April, so 2024-04. So I usually run the one before that, and I kind of keep it up to date that way. Okay, so if we go PHP minus V, there we go, 8.1. Perfect, that's all we need. Um, then it says changing Apache's directory index. In some cases, you might want to modify the way Apache serves files. If the user requests, they'll first look for the index.html. We want the web server to prefer PHP files, which is, which is not a bad idea. Um, so to make this change, open the dir.con file, uh, which is this one. So let's edit that. Um, there we go. And then all we'll do is we'll add index.php higher up the list. Um, so over here, we'll just go index.php and then remove it down over here. Uh, and all this is going to do is if there's an index.php file, it's going to always load that first when it browses to any folder, which is perfect. That's exactly what we need. So we can save that. And then we start restart Apache. So let's restart Apache. I wonder if... Let's do Apache that way. I wonder if that'll work for MySQL D as well. Something's gone wrong with this MySQL server installation. I'm going to have to figure that out. Anyway, not going to worry about it now. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the status. I'm happy that it should all be working. Okay, here it talks about installing the PHP exceptions. Uh, sorry, extensions. So you can do a PHP search or an apt search for everything to do with PHP. Um, and then it gives you this you know, massive list. But then you've got to go through all these things and decide which ones you want. So that's why I like to keep a copy of what I actually want somewhere. Um, and I install that one. I think they might give you... So there's PHP CLI, for example. Uh, yeah, they don't give you a nice you know, version of this. So this is the one I always use. This installs pretty much everything you need. Um, so you'll find it there. So this is a cloud cloud net thing. You can use this to pre-configure servers. I'm using it for a, an Ubuntu thing that I've got. You're welcome to dive into that code. I don't care, but I'm not going to go into that too much now. Um, okay, let's get back over here. So now we've got all the packages installed. We've got Linux installed, the server. We've got Apache installed. We've got MySQL installed. We've got PHP installed. Now we need to create a virtual host. Um, so an Apache virtual host is basically a file that tells the server, when a URL requests data from me, which files must I serve? And so in the case of the IP address, it's using the default um, virtual host file. But in the case of our domain um, that we set up, so psykrotk.cz, it doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know what, what files to serve, so it freaks out. And then it just defaults to the, to the default thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a virtual host for the domain, um, which is what they talk you through here, and then we're going to configure the file. So let's copy this, and we're just going to call this one uh, Psychrotech, and then we're going to assign it, assign it to the user environment reference your current system user. So that's that. So this is creating a directory inside the var www folder, which points to that user. And then we're going to create the uh, the virtual host. Hey, it's Ryan. <laughs> hey, buddy. Ryan's decided to come and visit my live stream because I was on his the other day. <laughs> if you're not following, Ryan, now it's your turn. Drop your Twitch in the chat. And if you're not following, following Ryan, follow Ryan now. <laughs> um, okay, so let's make this domain. Uh, there we go. And then you can generally just copy the virtual host details here. Uh, there we go, Ryan Welcher codes. If you want to learn anything about WordPress development, WordPress coding, block development, PHP development, JavaScript development, go and follow Ryan. He does a way better job of it than I do. 
Um, and he's in a, a US friendly time zone as well. <laughs> um, that's not why I showed up though. <laughs> uh, just kidding, man. Um, okay, so let me finish this out over here. So let's say server name, we'll call it Psychrotech and server alias. I'm just going to get to before. There we go. And let's do server alias Psychrotech in case anybody comes from the www. One of the most annoying things on the web, <laughs> maybe a little, is when people haven't set up their www alias. Um, and we'll just say webmaster at psychrotech. That's it, that's it, that's fine. Document root is that. And then a little, a little thing that I discovered recently, and this is going back to my, um, my local environment is on Apache. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have this problem, but I'm going to see if it's an issue. So let's just go here. Uh, scripts. I have of late, I have needed to set up these uh, sort of require all order from allow deny all that kind of thing so i might need to use this in a second we'll see how it goes um but that's the basic virtual host there so the server name is whatever domain name you're pointing it to the server alias it's always good to include aliases if you need to especially for www if people come looking for it server admin is usually your email address document root is the path to the files and then the error logs and that you can leave as as default so once that's created now we need to enable the virtual host. So you run the sudo at insight uh, command. So sudo a2 insight. We'll call it psychotic. Oh, can't spell. Um, oh, wait. Am I in the right place here? Hang on, where did I? Oh, it's because I didn't create a conf file. I just called it. <laughs> okay, so let's fix that. So let's move etc Apache to sites available. And we've got it. It's got to be a conf file, not just a plain text file without any extension. Otherwise, Apache doesn't know what to do with it. Um, so dot conf. Okay, and now let's try and enable it. That should just work. Yay, enabled new site. Excellent, okay. And then we can reload Apache. So we'll go sudo system reload Apache. There we go, that should work. Now we just need to, inside that Psychrotech folder, we need to create something. So let's just go um, nano index.php, I think. The documentation actually it actually says to disable the default site i'm not going to worry about that now you can do a config test reload things and then it actually says start creating an index.html or whatever i'm going to create an index.php and what i like to do is i just like to create a php info file so php info enough info there we go and that'll give me some php information when i hit that page so there we go that's that so now if I go to Psychotech, I should see a PHP info page. Woohoo! <laughs> it worked. Um, okay, so that is, it's set up. It should work now. Uh, we should be able to install WordPress and all good. One thing I want to note, um, I don't think this documentation dives into it, um, but you, you should be setting up um, uh, what are they called? SSL certificates for your for your websites. Um, the the spinup WP documentation I shared with you earlier has got information about that. I'm not going to dive into that now. Um, but essentially, you set up the you can use Let's Encrypt. You can set up a self signed certificate, and then when you do that, you set up a SSL um, Apache virtual host configuration, and you and you get that all working. Um, I am running out of time. I was hoping to do that today, but I'm running out of time. So I will try and see. Maybe we can do this again. Maybe when we do Nginx, we can cover it on there. But that is a that is a good thing to do. But now we've got everything up and working. We've got MySQL installed. We've got Apache installed. We've got PHP installed. And now we need to install WordPress. 
Um, and my favorite way to do this on a server is to use WPCLI because WPCLI is just easier and quicker and more straightforward. Um, so if you've never used WPCLI before, this is the perfect time to dive into it, uh, especially if you're managing servers. Um, the installation is really, really quick and easy. You run this command here, um, which basically downloads the WPCLI uh, file. So I'm going to just run it in my in the root of my user. It's downloaded it. You can do these things if you want to, but I'm just going to jump straight ahead and copy it to my user local bin wp directory so we're going to change the permissions basically making the the file executable no not mark paste um, so there we go and then we're going to move the far to this path here to wp um, so we'll just move it over there we go and now if i just run wp minus info anywhere on my machine wpcli will work so what's cool about that is now I can go cd www, no, cd var www.psychrotech and I can just run wp call download if I could spell it <laughs> and it will just download WordPress for me. Um, you can also do a WordPress installation using WP Sally, which is what I'm going to do now. So I think it is WP core install. Okay, it tells me it needs a config file. So then I can create go WP config create and it'll actually ask me some questions. It's missing a DB name parameter and a DB user parameter. Um, so if I go WP config create minus minus db name. I haven't created the database yet. I need to create the database. Okay, let's take a step back. So let's create the WordPress database. Now this isn't in any of the documentation. This is all just, you know, how to do things um, in the command line. So I haven't got any links for you for any of this, but if you want to create a database, you basically log in as the MySQL server, uh, as the MySQL user. Uh, you don't share your password on the live stream. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to make this bigger quickly. Um, so there I'm logged in. I'm trying to clear it. So uh, okay. hang on, let me do that again. I like to be at the top of the window. There we go. Okay. Uh, there we go. And paste that. Boom, we're logged in. And then you're going to go create database. And I'm just going to call it Psychrotech for now. Always using semicolons at the end of any SQL statement. So there it's created the database. So that's good. I'm going to use this, this root user to access the database. So that's fine. So that's all I need to do. So now I can exit out of here. So the database is created. All right. So then it was wp config create minus minus db user, I think it was. And in this case, we'll make it root. Um, oh, I just realized I need to specify the db password and I need to actually share the password with you. So I'm going to take this off screen. Um, I'm going to have to share it anyway, so I actually don't care. I'm going to delete the server after it's all over, so it doesn't matter. I don't know why I'm being so secretive about it. Um, so I'm just going to copy this password out. Uh, and then I think it's also db name um, equals psychrotech. I think that will work. Um, Okay, DB, I think it's DB pass now that I think about it. Yes, there we go. So now if I have a look, I've got a WP config .php file. It's created for me. It's got the DB name, the root user, the password, localhost. That's all perfect. Um, the other thing it doesn't do, oh no, it does generate keys and salts. That's excellent. Um, sets up the table prefix. So that's created. Now I should be able to go WP core install. And it's going to ask me for the URL, the title, the admin user, the admin email. Uh, and it's, I'm going to specify the admin pass as well. So WP core install minus minus URL is equal to HTTP uh, title is we'll just call it psychrotech. Um, admin user, I'm going to make it Jay Bossinger and admin email, I'm going to make my email address, um, which I have access to and you don't. 
<laughs> so I'll be able to set up a password. Um, okay. So that's going to run the install, uh, set up the tables, all that kind of stuff. Okay, there's the password. So if you want to, you're welcome to hop out over there and log into the site right now. Um, I'm, as I say, I'm going to destroy the server anyway, but let's go back over here. So if we go to Cycrotech, there we go. There is the site. Um, and there is WP admin. And it's asking me to log in. I'm going to do a last password um, so that it saves the password. So get a new password. Oh, could not be sent. Oh, I can't send out emails. Oh, never mind then. I'll just log in with the password. Um, so let's just pop that in there. Yay, we're in. Uh, and that is WordPress installed. Up and running, ready to rock and roll. Uh, I'm going to see if I can quickly um, take this off screen and generate a new password so nobody nobody hacks my server. <laughs> uh, let's just go set up the password. There we go. Update profile. There we go. I've got a new password now. You can't you can't hack it to my server. Um, I'm going to take that off screen and pop it on over there. And there we go. We have WordPress installed. Um, we're running out of time, so I'm going to try and see if I can quickly do the multi-site thing quickly. Um, what I did do was I did set up. So let's exit out of here. Um, I did set up a wildcard DNS entry. So if I go ping bob at psychrotech.ca.za, it should come back with the IP address, which is what it's doing. So in my DNS, I've set up a wildcard entry so that anything .psychrotech.ca.za points to that server. So that means I should be able to make turn this into a multi-site now, uh, which is one of the other things that I wanted to do. So if we go over to the WordPress multi-site uh administration pages in the dashboard oh dear developers fallen over uh let's do a refresh here oh don't you love it when the documentation dies when you're in the middle of a live stream but you somebody's updating something um <laughs> that's so frustrating um okay let's try the codex um Ryan, go and go and tell somebody the developer docs have fallen over. Oh, the codex is down as well. Oh no. <laughs> oh dear. Hopefully somebody's reported this. Uh, I'm sure they have. Um, so I actually do have, let me do it this way. Um, oh, Ryan says it works for him. Oh, maybe it's my internet doing weird and wonderful things. Um, interesting. Interesting, 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 interesting. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking now. I've just enabled it. Let me see here. Ah, there we go. Okay, so let's sort this out. Um, okay, it's working. Yay! So it was me. It was all me. So multi-site, where is it? Here we go. Multi-site network. Um, and basically, to create a network, you log into the config file. And you say define allow multi-site true. So let's do that. Um, so let's log back into the server. There we go. Okay. And let's log into the config. And let's define multi-site. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. That's changed. It must be a recent thing. Okay, so we want to allow multi-site, so that's great. And we save that. And then if we go back here and refresh the dashboard, then we should have an network setting thing somewhere. Um, da, 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 it's in the tools. Tools, network setup. There we go. Um, please make sure Modri Write is installed. 
I'm trying to think if mod rewrite is installed. Um, let me check that. Sudo A2 Ian mod rewrite. Okay, so it wasn't enabled, so that was the command to enable it, sudo a2n mod rewrite, uh, and then you restart Apache. Oh, now it's asking me to authenticate. All right, fine. It's probably because I didn't use sudo. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's done. So let's refresh this. Okay, that looks much better. I want to use subdomain. So because I've got the wildcard set up, that should work. So let's leave that at that. Psychotech sites, that's all fine. Let's go install. Okay, that seems to work fine. So now it's saying in the config, we need to add all of this. Uh, above the line reading, that's all stop, blah, blah, blah. So let's edit the config. Um, I think I can go page down here. Yeah, there we go. So allow multi-site true. Let's include that. Multi-site true subdomain it has all of that. Perfect. Okay. Want that to be updated. Uh, then add this to your access HD access file. Now, um, I didn't set up permalinks. I wonder if I could do that now. I should have I should have done that before I did this blast. Let me see if I can enable permalinks now. Um, okay, maybe I can't. Uh, okay, we'll just we'll just pop this in the HT access. So I'm gonna go nano HT access. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Yeah, that's fine. And then we'll paste that all over there. I'm gonna be I'm going to be cheeky here and I'm going to check what a default HD access looks like. Uh, so this is a local site that I, oh, it's not working. Uh, blast. Um, okay, should be fine. I should have done the, should have done the rewrite rules before I did um, this, but anyway, it's fine. I'll just save that and then Go back here, you'll be logging again. So let's log in again. Um, it was this one and this password, which I'm not showing you. <laughs> um, so let's log in. Okay, that's good. Oh, it was saved to day and name, so that's fine. So that's all working. And there we go. Now we have a multi-site and we can create different sites. I'm going to create a new site. I'm going to call it Bob, Bob's site. And it's just Bob at Psychotech. In case you're wondering, I've got a cache all set up. So any emails that go to that thing will work. Um, and that site should now be created. So if I visit the dashboard of that site, there's my Bob at Psychotech. And just to, okay, that, why is that not working? Hmm, interesting. That should work. I bet you it's got something to do with Apache configuration. Probably got something to do with the virtual host. Um, so, this is where I'm going to take a break um, because I need to remember that there's something I think I did to make this work. Uh, I'm trying to see if it might be to do with HT access. I'm trying to see if the site works. Yeah, you see the site is pointing to. So, I think what this is, is I haven't got wildcard set up. Uh, for the Psychotech domain, so I'm going to have to fix that as well. Um, 
So this is actually going to take longer than I thought it would. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break there. Um, and I'm going to go and do some research because I've forgotten how that even works. Uh, and I'm going to do this process over because I want to figure out why that my MySQL thing went weird. Um, and I want to remember how to fix the multi-site stuff. I think it's got to do with the Apache virtual host. Let me see. Is there something in here about that? Um, might rewrite support for an HS. Uh, options follow sim links. That's right. Options follow sim links. So that is. Um, maybe I can fix this. Options follow sim links already enabled or at least not permanently disabled. Make sure you have allow override all options all for the vhost. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Um, so. I think it's all of this. Um, I wonder if there's a quick answer on, on the internet. Um, Apache virtual host WordPress multi-site. Let's see if I can get this working. Ah, DigitalOcean. Here we go. Um, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. This is what we need. This is what we need. So let me copy this out and paste this in the chat. Um, options follow sim links, allow for all require all granted. Okay, let's go back and fix that. So sudo nano etc apache2 sites available, psychotech.conf. And then it's going to be in here. Yep. I really am pedantic about lining up my configuration files. I don't know why. <laughs> it's something I do. So it's options follow sim links, allow override all and cry or granted. Let's fix this for this domain. Yes, I can write. Okay. All right. And then we're going to have to restart Apache. Hopefully, I've got that somewhere in. There we go. Oh, wait. sudo restart. That should, shouldn't require a password because I think I've already logged in as the sudo user. There we go. All right. Let's see if that worked. No. Um, this might be, this might be, uh, my brave browser. Oh, it's not working. That's super annoying. Um, rewrite engine. Oh, it's the rewrite engine stuff probably, but that's in the, did we put that in the, yeah, that's already there. I've done something wrong, I think. Um, bring a of the bank, configuring version of spec method and document for each. I've definitely done this using just an Apache virtual host. Um, but I think I've got the virtual host configured incorrectly. Rewrite engine on, rewrite condition server name. I'm gonna to have to do a bit of research here. So it should be working. Um, there's something in the Apache configuration that I haven't configured correctly. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call this here. We've got 10 minutes left. I'm not gonna fix this in 10 minutes. So I'm gonna call this here, and I'm gonna try and see if I can figure this out after with after the fact. Um, 
I did have this working at some point in the past and I can't remember now what that configuration is. Uh, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of research on that one. It definitely is possible. Um, options follow some links, allow override all, options all. Let's have a look here. Now, options for service, all right, okay, I'll grant it options all. Let's just see if options all is part of it. Allow or deny now from all, allow override all. I'm pretty sure I've done it with these. I'm going to try these. See if it makes a difference. So I got a feeling this has got to do with like the newer version of Apache because I've gotten this working using, I'm pretty sure these, um, settings. So I'm going to try this and see if it makes a difference. Yeah. Let's try it. No, it doesn't like that. Something to, something to do with the configuration file I've messed up. Um, so maybe a little bit of research would have been a good idea. <laughs> it's a problem with the live streams. I don't plan anything. Um, so something has gone wrong somewhere. It's not pointing in the right direction. Something in the V host that I need to configure properly. Um, my one more thing. This works, I'm going to be annoyed. Don't think it will, though. Let's see. Okay, that's funny. I'm <laughs> sorry, but you have to agree that's funny. Um, so I just hadn't set up, <laughs> good grief. I just hadn't set up the wildcard server alias in the vhost config. Um, that is hilarious. So now, does that mean that these are all going to work as well? Um, let's see. That is the funniest thing. I wonder if it even needs any of this. <sighs> I feel so stupid right now. Um, let me comment all of these out and see what happens. Okay, let's restart the server. Yep, that was literally it. <laughs> I didn't need those extra configuration files. Uh, they were obviously already enabled on the Apache 2 server. So it was literally just the fact that I had not set the server alias correctly. Uh, I should have just set it to the wild card. So there we go. So I didn't need any of this stuff here. Um, that is the funniest thing. It really is. <laughs> uh, fun, fun, fun. So let's delete all of these. Uh, there we go. Um, done. We have a WordPress server. Uh, and that's it. And that was setting up a WordPress multi-site subdomain method using Apache. Um, we had some trouble with the MySQL server, which I'm still not sure about. Um, but that is the way that I set up these things. Um, I'm going to destroy the server after this after this uh, live stream. So if you want to try and hack it, it's not going to be around for much longer. Um, but there we go. That's the process. That's what I use. So I definitely use the DigitalOcean documentation a lot. Um, I use the WPCLI stuff a lot. So all the commands that I ran are all there if you want to check those out. Um, and then the WordPress multi-site installation is very useful as well. Um, okay, it is two minutes, four minutes to the hour. And I'm going to end that there. That was the Apache edition of this. I hope that the Nginx edition uh, goes a lot smoother. 
Um, I'm definitely going to do some research about that MySQL thing. Uh, I'm going to turn the server off now. Uh, it's going to go away. Uh, and then I'll delete it after this and then we'll do a new one next time. So next time will probably be in about three to four weeks time. We'll do the Nginx version of this. Um, I hope this was enjoyable at least in some way or interesting. Uh, you enjoyed me fumbling around and trying to figure it out. Um, but yeah, that's my bit for today. Um, cool. Thank you everybody for your, your attention and for joining me on this journey. Um, and I will see you the next time I live stream. Bye.